Hi, my name is John and welcome to another edition of Statistics Quest. I'm going to talk today about something called game-winning chances. That's a term that you hear more and more in pro football. Game-winning chances basically establishes a probability based on historical norms of a team winning under certain conditions. We're going to go over a mid-game example and then we'll talk about a specific Kyle Shanahan example. So, okay, a mid-game example. I, 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 of course, there's many that we could find, but one was uh, one that stood out a little bit was uh, Bill Belichick uh, went for it on fourth and one early in the game against the Bills just this previous weekend. He was down 14 nothing, and he lost about 3% game-winning chances. How do we calculate that? Well, we compare two scenarios. We compare the scenario as to whether or not he punts compared to whether or not he goes for it. And we make some assumptions. So assume that they are at midfield. I'm not sure where they were, but let's assume midfield. And assume that they have a 65% chance of making a first down on fourth and one. Okay. We'll also assume that if they make a first down, they then have 35% game-winning chances because we update our game-winning chances because now they have a first down at midfield instead of facing a fourth down, which they did prior. Let's also assume that if they miss the first down, they have 28% game-winning chances. How do we get these numbers? Again, based on historical norms. We can say, well, if we go back in history and look at similar scenarios, that these numbers are pretty close to being the case under you know, these situations. Now, there's some discretion involved. You know, you have the relative strengths of the team, certainly, and, uh, you know, one person's adjustment for that might very well be different than another person's adjustment. But these numbers should be in the ballpark. Okay. We, we'll do some number crunching. If they punt, let's assume they have 30% game-winning chances. Okay? Again, that's based on historical norms. That's pretty easy. That's right here, 30%. What if they go for it? Well, if they go for it, one of two things can happen. They can either make a first down or not make a first down. If they make a first down, we're giving it 65% of the time. That means that they have 35% game-winning chances. And when they miss the first down, which is 35% of the time, obviously, if they're not making it, because 65% plus 35% is 100%, we're giving them 28% game-winning chances. If we add this all together, we get 32.6%. <clears throat> So what's the difference between 32.6 and 32.6%? These are my own numbers, right? I just kind of went a little bit by gut feel. I compared this to something called Edge Sports, which is a company that does these calculations. There are other such uh, entities that do this, but that's one that I kind of pay close attention to. And I noticed that they had a calculation on this, which was 2.9%. Uh, so they have a little more data at their disposal. I should say a lot more data at their disposal. They have historical norms and et cetera. So, you know, my 2.6 was actually a pretty good estimate, assuming that their 2.9 was, was in the ballpark, which I assume it was. Okay, getting back to Kyle Shanahan. He was faced with a fourth and one with 250 left against Dallas. And I think they were about midfield and he punted. And I was talking to my... Good friend, P.J. McCauley. Uh, we were actually talking on the phone, actually, at the time, and we're watching the game. And, and uh, uh, to our surprise, uh, he, uh, he punted. And I'm thinking, uh, you know, to me, this is, this is a no-brainer. Uh, and P.J. agreed that you, you got to go for it. So I did some number crunching afterward. Okay, you go for it. If they're successful, I'm assuming they win 95% of the time. If they are not successful, I'm assuming they win 70% of the time. How did I get that 70%? Well, if they're not successful, Dallas now has the ball at midfield. Uh, certainly, they may get a touchdown. Uh, to to uh, you know, It's now a lot more plausible to end up winning the game. And let's just say they get a touchdown 50% of the time. Well, that doesn't mean they win 50% of the scenarios because, as I point out over here, San Francisco still can get a field goal a certain percent of the time after that to then win the game. So basically, San if San Francisco 
punts, excuse me, goes for it and fails, they may win even if Dallas gets a touchdown. So you have to include all of that. And I'm just estimating, right? There's a lot of parlays involved here, but I'm estimating that at 70%. So going back, I'm saying that 65% of the time that they convert on fourth and one, they win 95% of the time. And the 35% that they don't convert on fourth and one, they still win 70% of the time. That's 86% of the time. What if they punt? If they punt, Dallas gets the ball, you know, maybe at their 15-yard line, 20-yard line, whatever it is. And I'm assuming they get a TD 30% of the time. Okay? Uh, I don't know if that's high or not. Maybe it's slightly high. But uh, if you watch the game and you saw how easy, fairly easily they went down the field with less than a minute left and no timeouts left, this 30% seems at least in the ballpark. Okay. But again, just like the other scenario where they got a TD from midfield, if they get a TD having to go a longer field, there are certain, still a certain percentage of the time where San Francisco is going to get a field goal. Maybe it's less now than what I had earlier because if Dallas has to go virtually the length of the field, that's going to take up potentially more time. And who knows, they may get this TD with uh, 25 seconds left on the clock, and then San Francisco does not have a very good chance of getting a field goal, but they might get a TD with a minute left. All things considered, right, I have it at 25%. You know, I'm saying a, a lot of different scenarios. So what's this calculation here? I'm saying that if they punt... 70 times Dallas doesn't even get a TD, which I'm getting, giving San Francisco all of the wins there. But of the 30 times that Dallas does get a TD, I'm giving San Francisco 25% of those wins because, as I said, I think they get a field goal uh, in those cases. And if you add that up, that's 77.5%. If you take the difference between 77.5% by punting and 86%, you get 8.5% difference. Uh, Edge Sports, which I referenced earlier, I looked at after I did this. They actually had it at 17%. Uh, again, I'll, I'll defer to them. They're you know very likely a little bit closer. I don't know. Personally, I think 17% is slightly high. But uh, there are some nuances that, that go into the difference here. For example, I had a conversion rate of 65%. They had it at 70%. I had... Whereas I, I had this number at 70%, I believe they had that at 72.5%. But the point is not to compare mine to edge sports. It's to basically to convey what is meant by game-winning chances. This, these are the numbers that are basically behind the scenes with game-winning chances. And again, Kyle Shanahan, I think he's a fine coach. And ironically, I've always thought he was kind of sabermetric-oriented. And who knows why he made the decision that he did. Uh, there's something called risk aversion that, you, that you've probably heard that term. And what might have been going through his mind is that if he decides to go for it and fails and it doesn't work, he's going to very likely be crucified in the media the next day. So he kind of took the conservative path. He ended up getting away with it. But, uh, you know, to me, he still made a mistake. I hope you like this edition of Statistics Quest. Please subscribe if you have not already, and I'll see you next time. Thank you.